Uh, hello, my name is uh, Roy Morello, and I'm uh, currently an assistant professor in the Department of Physiology and Biophysics at uh, UMS, and also co-appointed in the Division of Genetics. In, uh, in, uh, in my laboratory, the, the major interest lies in, uh, in bone biology and to understand all aspects of bone biology, bone development, and bone disease. To do that, we, uh, we look at the function of novel genes, genes that are expressed throughout bone development, and try to understand what is it that they do. Uh, for instance, I would like to uh, share with you uh, a very interesting story that I was privileged to be, to be part of. Uh, a few years back, we identified a, a novel gene uh, which uh, appeared to be, uh, you know, uh, have a role during uh, skeletal formation and development. When I, uh, um, uh, you know, started working on this gene, and, you know, I really had no idea what was the function. And, and the purpose of the study was to understand a little bit better of uh, what was the function of the prote protein encoded by this novel gene. And to do that, we generate a, a knockout mouse, which is a, a mouse model that was lacking both copies of this gene, and hence uh, making no such protein. The mouse turned out to have a very interesting phenotype of uh, uh, very uh, severe and dramatic osteoporosis. We call this osteopenia, which is uh, a dramatic decrease in the amount of bone. Uh, we characterize the bone phenotype. We learn how to do that in, in great details. And then we also began to look at uh, what were the potential interacting partners of this protein. And uh, we were uh, lucky because an, an emerging uh, uh, piece of literature from another laboratory suggested that there was a, 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 you know, a, a potential interaction of this protein with another enzymatic uh, protein that was uh, lying inside a cell. We pursued this story, which uh, turned out to be extremely interesting and, and fruitful. And, and show that these two proteins really interacted with each other and were uh, sort of companion in modifying what is known as type 1 collagen. Type 1 collagen is uh, uh, the most abundant protein in our body and, and certainly the, a very, very important uh, protein for our skeleton. It is the predominant protein in the, in the matrix of, our, uh, of the bone. And, uh, and certainly it, looks, it, it's, uh, it plays an important role of uh, a structural role. If you have uh, a collagen that is of poor quality, your bones become weak. And this led me to talk about uh, a disease uh, that is known as osteogenesis imperfecta, also known as brittle bone disease. This is a congenital disease whereby uh, uh, kids are born with very brittle bones. There are several types of, uh, of the disease based on the severity and the presentation. There are type 2, for instance, is lethal and always invariably at birth. There is a type 3 form of osteogenesis imperfecta, which is a very severe form. And, uh, and kids that try to, to walk in, in, uh, in their early ages have severe fractures and eventually deformity of the bones. They don't heal well and they end up on a wheelchair. And there are other forms that are also milder. And this is depending on, on the type of mutation of type 1 collagen. It was known since the early 80s that you know, this disease is mostly caused by mutation in, a, in, a, in one of the two genes that together form the type 1 collagen molecule. However, there had been uh, several uh, documented situations in, uh, in, in the past uh, 20, 25 years of uh, families whereby both parents were healthy and had more than one kid affected with, uh, with this, such a disease, suggesting that m most likely each of the parents was a carrier for a mutation of an unknown yet undiscovered gene. And I was, I guess, lucky because I was the right person in and, and the, and the right place and the right moment. And uh, six years ago, indeed, we identified the first mutation in this gene called CRTAP, that stands for cartilage associated molecule. And this was, we demonstrated, was the first gene causing recessive form of osteogenesis imperfecta. And so uh, it means that uh, parents were healthy, but both carrier for a mutation in one of the two copies of this gene. And they unfortunately were passing down the mutation at the same time to a kid and having a sick kid. And so uh, these, uh, you know, we, we published this uh, interesting story in 2006. And, and, and so for about 25 years, nothing really happened in the osteogenesis imperfecta field other than understanding that this was mostly a type 1 collagen mutation. And uh, after our discovery about six years ago, in the last now six, seven years, 
very other numerous discoveries have been identified in other genes that either interact with our initial uh, protein that we were studying, or genes that have uh, you know, a similar function, which is modifying somehow favoring the secretion or the correct synthesis of type 1 collagen. Uh, so, as often happened in science, nothing happened for 25 years and then you just open the lid and all of a sudden everything explodes and the field has a, a renewed uh, interest in the, in the, into, into how a disease is formed. And certainly, we don't just want to know why a disease is, is, is caused, but also understand what, uh, how the molecules play together in, uh, in, in normal biology and how can we then interfere or, or modify an aberrant behavior so that we can come up with a new therapeutic approach to treat these diseases. So here on the monitor, for instance, you can look at uh, a micro CT uh, image of, uh, this is a femur from uh, mice on the left side that have a, a mutation in this gene called CRTAP. And on the right side, instead, you can have, a, you look at a micro CT image of a femur of a healthy mouse. Now you can see that these femurs from the sick mouse are shorter and they have significant less bone. You can look at the portion here where there is so-called trabecular bone. This is a meshwork of bone trabecular that contribute to the strength of the bone. But also the, the cortical bone, this is the part of the bone that forms the, the, the cortex of the bone that gives a solidity to the bone, and there is a lot less in these mice, suggesting that indeed these mice represent a very good and, uh, and useful model for studying mechanism of the disease, and potentially down the road also uh, um, there are models where we can test new, uh, new drugs for attempting new uh, therapies for osteogenesis imperfecta. Uh, we have recently shifted onto the study of, a, of a, another gene which has high similarity to the CRTAP molecule. This is another gene that is very poorly characterized. There are uh, some uh, uh, contradicting evidence in the literature to what it does. So we hypothesize that this gene is also relevant based on some initial preliminary data that you know, is also play a role in, in skeletal formation. And we, have, we now have solid evidence and, um, that this other gene is also involved in, in bone homeostasis. Mice that have a, a, a mutation in this gene have, a, again, low bone mass. But we believe that because this gene, this gene is expressed in many other tissue, it potentially could be involved in other phenomena. And so we are currently investigating that by generating a more sophisticated mouse model, which is a, basically a conditional inactivation of this gene. In a, and we can do that using a, you know, a genetic approaches to inactivate that gene in a single window moment in a single tissue. So by doing that, we are you know, doing a lot of work trying to really uh, uh, go to the, to the uh, root of the function of this gene and understand what it does in multiple tissues.